Hi there. Last time we explored ASCII. If you haven't done the previous lesson, go back and do that lesson first. Because the topics I cover in this video follows on the previous video. We will continue with ASCII in this video. In the previous lesson you learned how to pass a character to the ORT function to identify the ASCII code for that character. Today we will do the opposite. We will provide the ASCII code to identify the character. I first want to point out a few ASCII codes that we will use in our demo later. Last time we worked with ASCII code 34, which is a quotation mark. We will use ASCII code 34 again in this project. We will also use one of the control characters in our project. ASCII code 13 represents the enter key on your keyboard. Like I explained last time, the enter key is also known as the carriage return key, because in the days of the old typewriters, if you reach the right margin of the paper you are typing on, you had to move a mechanism called the carriage back to the left margin of the paper to start typing from left to right again. So when you press the enter key to go back to the left margin of a text editor, you are returning the carriage or the cursor back to the left margin. Make a note of ASCII 34 for a double quotation mark and ASCII 13 for enter. Let's look at the solution of the project we will create. Here I have a form with a spin edit and a blue panel. The panel contains two labels. When you select or type a number in the spin edit, LBL character shows the character as you make the change in the spin edit. And LBL ASCII value displays the ASCII code, which is also the number in the spin edit. And here I added a button to show a message box to display more info. You can download the starter project from my Patreon page at patreon.com slash learndelphi to start the project with me. Here is the user interface in design time. The numbers for the spin edit range from 0 to 255, because that is also the range of ASCII numbers. When you change the number in the spin edit, the character represented by the ASCII number displays here on the right. When you click a button, a message box must display. Notice that this message displays on multiple lines. Double click the spin edit. The default event handler that Delphi creates is for the onChange event of the spin edit. The onChange event is triggered when the user changes the value in the spin edit. The user can change the value by clicking the up and down buttons or by typing a new number. We must declare variables that will be shared by the onChange event and the onClick event of the button. So we must declare them under the implementation section. So scroll up a little bit. Under the implementation section type var and on the next line pte ASCII code as byte and then chr character as char. pte ASCII code is a byte variable that will store the ASCII code the user provide. chr character is a char variable that must store the character that we want to retrieve. Put your cursor between the begin and end statement of the event handler for the onChange event of the spin edit. Type three comments to separate your input, processing and output. Go under the input and type PTE ASCII code colon equals SED ASCII code dot value. Go to the line under processing, type CHR character colon equals PTE ASCII code and the semicolon. CHR character is a char variable and BTE ASCII code is a byte value we got from the user on this line. To get the character from the ASCII code, we must use the CHR function. Put your cursor in front of BTE ASCII code and type CHR followed by an opening bracket. And type a closing bracket after BTE ASCII code. You mustn't confuse the CHR function with the char data type. To identify the character from an ASCII code, we use the CHR function. The function takes an integer type as input. In this case, it is a byte named PTE ASCII code, and it returns a character. Let's assume the number you passed in is 67. The CHR function will go and retrieve the character for ASCII 67. Then the function will assign its result, which is the character, to a char data type. In this example, it is called CHR character. So this code will now retrieve the character for the number we pass as an input and then assigns it to the char variable called chr character. Now go under output, type this statement. Here we take the character we saved in chr character and we assign it to the caption of lbl character. 
Go to the next line and type the following code. This code must concatenate the byte to a string, so we must first convert the byte with the IntoString function. On this line we convert the byte called BTE ASCII code to a string and then we concatenate it with a literal string. Run the application. Click the up button of the spin edit a few times and notice how the outputs change. Now type the number 65 into the spin edit. The character for ASCII 65 is uppercase A. Close the form. Go to design view. Double click the button on the form. We want to display a multi-line message in a message box. The second line must be a blank. Go between begin and end and type this code. This will be the first line of the message. Notice how we use hash 34 again to concatenate quotation marks in the front and the back of the character variable. Let's first test this before we continue with the code. Run the project. Type 65 into the spin edit and click the button. Notice the quotation marks in the message. This is the first of four lines for this message. Click OK and close the form. Remove the semicolon and the closing bracket of the show message procedure and comment this line as line 1. Go to the next line and type a plus followed by hash 13 and comment this line as line 2. This will be a blank line. Go to the next line and type this code. This will be the third line and here we display the ASCII code after converting the byte to a string. Go to the next line and type this code. This is the last line and here we display the ASCII code again after converting the byte to a string. Remember, earlier I asked you to also make a note of ASCII code 13. ASCII 13 is the enter key, which must return the cursor to the left margin for each line of the message. Here, we concatenate hash 13 to tell the compiler to continue on the next line. Also notice that we terminate the instruction here, after the FAF line. So the compiler sees all these lines as one statement. Run the program. Type 65 into the spin edit. Click the button. The first line of the message shows the character between quotation marks. That's what we get when we use hash 34. Close the form and save your work. Next time we will learn how to retrieve specific characters from a string. If this lesson was helpful to you, please like and subscribe and share the lessons with all your friends on social media. Also, don't forget to download all my lessons from patreon.com slash learndelphi. And thank you to my supporters on Patreon. I'll talk to you again in the next lesson.